Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they can do no wrong. And in today's episode, a Karen decides to punish OP by giving them a good old spanking. And she learns real quick why that's a big mistake. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's ridiculous stories. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I work in a small office of like 15 people. Now I love to cook, but normally for lunch, I just bring a soup to try to lose weight or buy something from one of those places nearby. Anyways, my boss loves to cook as well. And it's a well-known secret that it puts her in a good mood if you compliment her lunch. If you need to leave early, all you have to do is say, Wow, Karen, that salad looks delicious. Where did you get it? Or, you made that? Wow. And then five minutes later, ask her to leave early, and it's no problem. Of course, I was very happy with this arrangement. But at lunch one day, she was giving out how ridiculous it is that all celebrity chefs are men, and that it's sexist, and that she would have a Michelin star if she were a man. Now, I'm one of three men who work in my office, and I thought this was insane, since firstly, she doesn't even own a restaurant, and secondly, there's many female celebrity chefs, although the top three celebrity chefs who come to mind are definitely male. I ignored it because I wasn't gonna call out my boss. But then she says, OP gets it. I bet he can't even reheat leftovers without his fiance. Now hearing her say that, that was really disrespectful, wildly inappropriate, and also incorrect. I told her I actually cook all the meals at home from my fiance and I. And at that she laughed and says, she feels sorry for my fiance then. I got mad, but again said nothing. Instead, I started making lovely lunches. Now I'm a great cook, if I do say so myself. We all usually have lunch together, and instantly, I start getting compliments. Karen said nothing, but with every compliment, she looked like she was sucking on a lemon. I did it out of spite and to prove a point, but seeing her reaction made me keep it up. After about a week, she calls me into her office saying that there's been complaints about my elaborate lunches, and that I had to tone it down, or better yet, stop completely. Now I played dumb, I just said that I started bringing in leftovers. And she jumped on that and said, yeah, that's it, no more food from home. Again, playing dumb, I say, okay, I guess. I'll just tell the others no more food from home. And at that she panicked and said, no, just me. That only I wasn't allowed to bring food from home. I then asked her why, and she fumbled and said no one else had a complaint against them. I then asked for it in writing, and she declined saying that it was a personal matter. And that's when I said, if I don't have it in writing, I won't know what to accept and left. Guys, I am so sorry, I just couldn't stop laughing at how ridiculous that was while reading the story. Like, this has got to be one of the weirdest bosses ever. Like, stop bringing good lunches to work, because I want to have the best looking food here, and I want the compliments, not you. Like, talk about being ridiculously petty, and yeah, if I were OP, I'd definitely be turning it up a notch. I'd start lighting a candle, asking if I can dim the lights, and look at hiring a violinist to come in during lunch, because if you want to be petty, I'm winning. I'm doing whatever it takes to be super fancy. Okay, so I'm 48 years old, and I have a son that graduates this year from high school. My wife and I started his college fund the minute we found out she was pregnant. Since we make good money, in the mid-six figures, his college fund currently has almost $400,000 in it. Now, we've never told our son what to do with his life. We may have guided his decisions, as any good parent should, but since he's still young, we let him make his own decisions. We also never expected academic excellence, or forced him into sports or artistic activities. Now that he's graduated high school, he says he doesn't even want to go to college. We said, as long as he's sure, he can do whatever he wanted. He refused trade schools, too. He also doesn't want to work with us in our business. He said that he planned to use the whole fund to start a business of his own. I said I'll allow it only if he takes some business management, accounting, and law classes in the nearby community college. I also said that I would pay them out of pocket and not from the fund. And then I would expect a made business plan before I would give him the money. My wife agrees 100%, but he calls us a-holes and said it's unfair for us to essentially hold this college fund hostage to make him do what we want. We think we're doing our best to make sure that his business succeeds. So am I the a-hole? 
So yeah, OP is like a million percent not the a-hole in this situation. And it sounds like he has a good head on his shoulders and is very responsible and knows what he's doing. And it's not like he has it hostage for any selfish reason either. It sounds like he's really trying to get his son to stay on a good track in life and not just give a 17-year-old $400,000 for a random startup when that kid has probably little knowledge because you know what, at that age, you're dumb as bricks with handling money. And all that money can literally disappear in the blink of an eye with a few bad decisions. Like the kid could be like, oh dad, you know that $400,000 you gave me? Well, instead of a business, I had this great idea. I thought a Lamborghini would be way, way better. So yeah, definitely not the a-hole. Dad, stand your ground. And if you can get your kid to listen to what you have to say, he'll probably be really, really successful. Just like Stevie Boy. Me? So my mom and nan told me this a while ago, and I just remembered it after posting another tale about my youth involving said birthmark. My birthmark is shaped like a love heart, and it was really clear that it looked like a stamp until I was 11, where it's faded. At the time, I was barely 5 months old, and I was sitting on my mom's lap while waiting for my turn in the hospital. I have a thyroid conditioning, requiring a blood test per year. My nan said that I was getting irritated being stuck on my 17-year-old mother's lap. And yeah, my mom was young, but she's done a pretty good job raising me. Anyways, my mom sat me down with the other babies, and I was playing with some wooden blocks, and I was just sitting on my own. I also have autism, hence the avoidance of other human beings. My mom says that there was a girl that was a bit too old to be with the babies, and she was drinking milk. She then drops the milk right on me, ruining the bumblebee shirt I was wearing. My mom then took me, and she had to take my shirt off because it was soaked. It then exposed my birthmark, which is way darker than it is now. And I've always had pale skin, so it stuck out like a tail would. I'm being fussy, and as my mom cleans me, there's a woman glaring daggers at my mom and my nan. Her husband's busy with their son who's crying because I'm crying. I'll call the lady Ella, but she was 1000% a Karen. The woman says, excuse me? To which my nan says, I'm sorry, OP will calm down really soon. The woman says, why have you tattooed her back? That's disgusting. No wonder she's crying so much. My nan hears her say that and says, uh, tattoo? My nan looks at my back and sees the love heart. And she says, no, 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 that's her birthmark. I know it looks weird, but it's not a tattoo. The woman responds and says, of course it's a tattoo. No baby has a birthmark like that. At this point, other parents are looking at her, including her husband. And she says, you are a horrible mother to do that to your baby. My nan tells her, no, she's my granddaughter. Now my mom is close to crying from the embarrassment. I've stopped crying, and the next part is in Nan's words, not mine. My Nan says, if you say a word about my granddaughter, I will take a chair leg and shove it so far up your rear that you'll be mistaken for a unicorn. Hearing my Nan say that, the woman acted like she had just been slapped. When a nurse came in, she was pulled by Ella, and Nan overheard her saying that my Nan was abusing me and my mom. The nurse looked at us and saw that we clearly had been crying while my Nan was visibly furious. Thankfully, her husband had some semblance of sanity in him, and the woman's husband said, my wife thinks that young lady has tattooed her granddaughter's back. The woman chimes in and says, there's no way that's a birthmark. The nurse looks at my back strangely and asks, can you prove that isn't a tattoo? At this point, my mom's mad, and she says, I wouldn't tattoo my baby. I'd like to speak to someone over these false accusations. The nurse looked conflicted. She was facing an increasingly upset grandmother, and a snobbish mother who was possibly genuinely concerned for my well-being. She then called my doctor to stop what he was doing and to come into the waiting room. My mom said the doctor basically rolled his eyes and told the woman that it is a birthmark, telling her, yeah, that's a birthmark. There are so many possible shapes that there can be a possibility for a birthmark to look like a heart. While the woman says, that can't possibly be true. The doctor tells her, your heart's in the right place, but you went about it the wrong way. OP doesn't have a tattoo, and these two aren't abusing OP, she's just here for a blood test. And at that, the woman just sat there quiet for the rest of the time, and he's our favorite doctor. My goodness, can I just say that I love the response from OP's nan to that rude, rude woman who couldn't mind her own business. Like, that's gotta be the most unique threat that I've ever heard, guys. And honestly, I don't think anyone would in their right mind tattoo a five-month-old baby, but I could also be wrong because there are some very irresponsible parents out there. And guys, OP does share a picture of the birthmark, and it's right here. It does look like a heart. 
I used to work as a desk assistant in a dorm room building from a university. Basically, my job was to help if a student locked their key inside or wanted to put a work order in. One day, I just sat down for the 8pm to 12am shift and I see a very pissed off middle-aged Karen approaching me. I knew it was family weekend and that's why she was probably in there, but I didn't know what would come next. So the Karen marches up to me and says, Can you help me? Can you help? I tell her, maybe, what seems to be the issue. The woman tells me, me and my husband are trying to sleep, and our daughter's roommate is up and her boyfriend just stopped by and left his shoes on the floor. At that moment I'm thinking, why the heck didn't you get a hotel? And I say to her, well ma'am, half the room does belong to her roommate and I can't stop them from being awake at 8pm, I can't even leave this desk. She says to me, well you need to get someone here right now that can fix this. Her roommate knew we were staying, so we need that room. Tell her to leave. I reply, her roommate has the right to be there and is under no obligation to leave. If anything, she's being nice by not complaining that you're taking up her space. At this point, the daughter comes crying and says, Mom, stop. Come outside right now. I told you I wouldn't like this and you didn't listen. You're ruining this visit. They then both go outside and her husband comes in and says, Please tell me that I'm not the only one whose wife did this. I give him a nod and he says, of course I am. He then mutters that they should have gotten a hotel as he goes outside. In short, an entitled mom thought she could kick her daughter's roommate out of the dorm room so she and her husband could use it as their personal hotel. I feel sorry for everyone but the mom. Actually, being in that room must have been hell, and I still wonder to this day where she wanted that guy to put his shoes other than the floor. Oh guys, Karens are always embarrassing their children, right? I feel so bad that the poor girl's mom did her dirty like that. Like the audacity of that woman to kick out her daughter's roommate because hotels cost money. Some people, right? So here's some backstory in the situation. I was about 16 years old at the time, and I was living with my grandparents. They were having a little get-together, but the guests were all told to stay out of my room because I wasn't feeling well at all. Plus, the cat was in there, and with people going in and out of the house, we didn't want him to escape. There was even a sign on the door. It read, Please do not disturb, cat inside. Since I was sick, my body wasn't holding its temperature right. So I was in a sports bra and shorts, but my robe was next to me. I was laying in my bed, just trying to get a bit of homework done before I passed out again. I told my grandmother to bring some food in when it was ready, and that was it. I then heard a knock on the door. It was super light, so I thought maybe it was my grandma bringing me something to eat, not wanting to wake me up. I throw the robe on and say, yeah, come in. The next thing I know, it's a little gremlin coming in. Chocolate all over his face and hands, and of course, he walks right in and started touching stuff, not even closing the door. Luckily, I grabbed the cat because my grandma's a slow walker, and he says, wow, cool room. The kid said that and tried to pick up one of my notebooks, one that was really special to me. I took it off the table before he could get fudge on it. I tell him, I'm sorry, bud, but you gotta go back to your mom. You're not even supposed to be in here. I'm sick. At that, the kid ignored me, still touching the stuff, and he says, I'm bored though, and you have really cool stuff. I got my shots last night, I promise. I shake my head and point to the door. I tell him, it's rude to go in someone's room when they say no, so please go out there and play with the other kids. I'm sick. I say that firmly this time. The kid whines, but leaves, slamming my door. I shake my head, and this time, go to my desk where all my really fragile art supplies are, clearing a spot for me to eat in a couple of minutes. I start getting really hot, so I take the robe off. And the next thing I know, my door flies open. I barely managed to grab the cat, and a Karen stood there, red-faced and fuming, and said, My son said you spanked him. Now, I didn't even touch him once. It should also be known that this woman is known by our family for having a habit of swatting kids if they step out of line. She was gasping and covering her eyes, as if she's never seen another woman not fully clothed before. She then screams at me, Young lady, that is so indecent. There's children in this house. Put on clothes. I just stare at her dumbfounded and I shake my head saying, Look lady, I never hit your kid. I would never do that. And I'm sick. He shouldn't be coming in here and neither should you. What followed was her going on for about 5 minutes or so, how I was the one in the wrong, blah blah blah. My stomach is starting to churn a little bit from the stress. And being sick, I know I'm not going to keep it down for long. I tell her she has to leave right now because I'm sick and she had no right to be there in the first place. That's when she grabbed me as if I was 6 years old and she starts trying to spank me, even managing to get my shorts down and this woman actually smacked me. 
So I did what most people would do. I screamed for my grandfather saying, Papa, this woman is hitting me. I slam her back. Her hip slams into my bed frame and I run into the hallway, slamming and holding the door closed behind me as she wails like a banshee. Now I'm indecent in front of Gasp, but it's also pretty important because they can see like the six or seven really bright red marks that are on my thighs and my butt. My grandfather was never one to curse profusely, but seeing his half-naked granddaughter with obvious marks from an assault standing in the hallway trying not to have a panic attack, he lost it. He called her so many things that I lost count. A few others came into the room, screaming at her as well. I'm crying at this point, not because she hurt me, but because I was humiliated, trying to just get back in my room and hide from the world forever. Little did I know, it got worse. She starts yelling, saying my grandparents spoil me, and that I hit her kid first. By this point, her own husband was yelling, no she didn't, right in her face, but she didn't care. The woman took my desk, flipped it over, and floored everything on it, breaking a lot of projects that I was working really hard on, and all my art supplies spilled everywhere, all into the carpet and everything. She was quickly kicked from the house. Her son admitted to lying, and he felt really bad for what happened. He was crying, hugging me, saying he was super sorry, and basically being as apologetic as a kid really gets. We never talked to her after that, except to get the money for my stuff. She refused, but my mom said that she would file charges for assault of a minor when she pulled my pants down in order to hit me. That she would lose her kids if we won the case. Which she did a year later anyway, and they live with their much better father. So she gave me roughly 500 bucks out of court, and I got to call her a bitch to her face. Guys, what the heck is wrong with some people? Like first, she charges into OP's private space without permission. Second, calls OP indecent for being in nothing but a sports bra and shorts, which I don't think that's in any way being indecent. And third, proceeds to pull down her pants to spank her. Like what the heck in the world did I just read, guys? And not only did she hit OP once, but she hit OP seven times and left marks. Guys, I'd be calling the cops at that point. So I live in the UK, and the legal alcohol drinking age is 18 here. I work in an extremely busy pub that sells drinks in takeaway cups to drink outside, an especially popular option in the summer, when this story happened. I'm also a female, late 20s. So on this day, a Karen and a kid come into the busy bar. I clock them when they walked in. The kid looks around 15 years old. The woman's ordering her drinks to take away, and the kid's outside. The woman orders a pint of scrumpy, which is strong traditional cider and a coke without saying a word. She's just prodding the signage with her manicured finger without even registering my existence. I repeat the order back to her, pour the drinks, and tell her how much. She ignores my offered hand and drops a note and a pile of coins on the bar, barely within awkward reach. I politely ask her if she wouldn't mind putting the coins in my hand. She ignores me and says, keep the change, and walks out. After she leaves, I pretzel myself around many ill pumps to pick up the coins from the bar, to count them out, finish the transaction, and pop the extra five pence in the tips jar. I then go and serve the next customer. A few minutes later, I'm aware of her beckoning me from over at the no service end of the bar, holding the pint of scrumpy. I make eye contact, give her a nod, and then turn to finish serving the customer that I've just poured a drink for. The woman screams from across the room, excuse me? I tell her, hang on one minute please, I'm just serving this man. The woman ignores what I just said, and she says, excuse me. I finish serving the man, come over and ask, is everything okay? The woman thrusts the pint into my hands and says, this cider is completely flat. I say to her, uh, I'm sorry for the confusion, but it's a traditional scrumpy, it's meant to be flat. The woman interrupts me and says, I know what cider's supposed to be like. This is flat. I want you to pour another one in a fresh glass and put some life into this one. I respond, uh, can I suggest that you might want to try a different cider? We have a hard cider on keg that might be more than what you're expecting. The woman says, I ordered what I wanted. What I was expecting was that you might know how to pour a pint. Do you want to try again, or shall I ask him to pour it for me? She then points at my male colleague, and I say, excuse me? The woman says, my son barely had a sip of that, and he won't even drink it. At this point, I'm shocked and say, Uh, you gave that to your kid? The woman sputters and says, Yeah, well, he's over 18. I look at her and say, Is he? Now, I had seen him. He didn't look a day over 15. Now, the Karen must have noticed at this point that she was about to lose. Because the next thing you know, she's gesturing towards the pint in my hands, and she says, Oh, just give it back. I don't have time for this. I tell her, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. And she says, I paid for that. 
I then go and get the money from the till and extend it towards her and she won't take it. She says, I want the drink I paid for. I tell her if you can come in with your son and have a valid photo ID proving he's of age. At this point, the Karen loses it. She says, my son doesn't need ID. I'm with him. I'm his mother. I tell her, I'm sorry, but it's the law. Take your money. I don't want this argument. She says, fine, it's for me. I then place the cider on the back bar out of reach, close my eyes, and take a deep breath. And that's when Karen says, I want to speak to your manager. Yep, there it is. I haven't even opened my mouth to tell her that I am the manager. Before she's striding over to my male colleague, who's clearly been rubbernecking while serving customers, and can't wait to get involved. She goes over to him and says, I need to complain about your employee. She has no customer service skills and clearly doesn't know how to pour a pint. My colleague says, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll make sure she's fired immediately. She then says to him, now you'll pour a decent pint, won't you? My colleague tells her, no, my pints are crap. And the woman is shocked and says, what? He tells her, I'm not gonna do it. 8% scrumpy isn't the best gateway alcohol for kids, by the way. Just saying. The woman sputters and storms out, muttering something about leaving a bad online review. That's when I turn to my colleague and say, hey, you shouldn't have said that. He says, sorry, I couldn't help it. I tell him, yeah, you shouldn't have said your pints are crap. You pour a lovely pint. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. A Karen teacher punishes OP for refusing to listen to her when OP is in fact deaf. Ain't that something, guys? Go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.